Hi, I am back with another polymer clay tutorial. I'm having so much fun with my new video camera that I have been making videos like there's no tomorrow. So um, today what I'm going to do is a video on faux polymer clay turquoise. And this is a, a tutorial that it's kind of a mixture of a lot of things that I found online and everybody has a different way of doing faux polymer clay. And I particularly like this one because I'm a sparkly, smooth kind of girl. I don't like jagged things. I don't like um, crazy looking things. I want my stuff smooth and sparkly. So that is pretty much what I got with this. And what I did was... Um, Instead of leave it jagged like I know real turquoise is supposed to look, I sanded this down really well so that you could see the veining in it and so that you could see the um, the sparkle in it. And I'll put a picture, a good picture of it at the end because it'll be so much easier to see. And um, I really like it. I really like the way it turned out. I think it needs a little more sanding and some finishing. But... Um, I think I'm going to make a necklace out of these. And anybody who knows me knows that I am horrible at finishing pieces. And I tend to make a whole lot of components and no finished pieces. So my New Year's resolution for 2012 is to finish the pieces and make some more tutorials. Okay, so for this what you're going to need is as usual your knife and I used three different colors of clay and unfortunately I didn't save the other color because I mixed it all up I took one part one full block of turquoise with two little sections of um, emerald and there's one two three four five six there's eight sections here I took two of them so it is basically two parts emerald, eight parts turquoise, and then about two parts pearl. And the pearl you can completely omit. I put it in there because, again, I love sparkle. So um, I like the shimmer that the pearl gives polymer clay. I like to mix pearl into just about everything. So you're also going to need, I have a couple of cups with just a drop of water. And the reason for that is I like to thin my paint. And what I'm going to do here, because there's two schools of thoughts on making turquoise beads. One is that you should use a dark brown or burnt umber type of color. And the other is that you should use black. Well, I am going to try both and compare them and see how they turn out. You need a chopper, which I just broke both of mine. Literally, just broke them both while I was trying to chop this clay. So what you do is you take the clay, you mix it all together really well. You don't want any streaks. You want it completely blended. You take it, and I made this into about six or eight walnut-sized, uh, not walnut, probably more like um, silver dollar-sized pieces, probably about this big this size piece and put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes. Take those pieces, put them in your chopper, and chop it up. Now, if you don't have a chopper, and, and one thing I want to know, anything that you use for polymer clay, don't ever use it for food. Everything made for polymer clay, um, everything used for polymer clay needs to stay for polymer clay. Polymer clay is non-toxic, but we really don't want to take any chances. So if you don't have a chopper, your best bet is to just take your blade and do one of these and just chop. You want rough pieces, jagged pieces, you don't want um, you don't want uniform pieces, so you don't want to cut it up into, you know, individual pieces and make like, you know, certain size squares. You just want very, very random pieces. You can't go wrong with this. Once you do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and separate half and half because, like I said, I'm going to do um, half with a dark brown color and half with a black color. And this was done with the black color, but I want to see 
what type of effect I'm going to get with the, I think mine's burnt umber, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, the other thing, if you're like me and you like sparkle, you'll need some glitter. Fine glitter. Okay, so first things first, I am going to put on a glove because this is extremely messy. And last time I did this, it took me two days to get all the paint off my hands. I'm going to put on a glove, and and it doesn't help that I work in the healthcare field where I'm constantly washing my hands because this stuff makes my hands so dry between the clay and the the soap that I use on a daily basis in the hospital and the um, um, sanitizer. My hands are, as you can tell, my fingers are terrible. My skin is peeling. So. For this one, I'm going to do black first. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here with my water because I'm going to thin it out. And I've already mixed up my, or shaken up my paint, so that's done. I'm going to mix this because we just want it kind of thin. And I'm not sure why I started mixing it. I think because it just was like, a pain in the butt to mix a real thick paint, but I found that this works really well for making an even coat. So now I'm just going to pour it onto my clay. I don't think I have enough because you want to be very generous with this. This is not something that you want to skim on because in the end what you're going to do is sand off the color. So. And then I just take it and mix it all around. Get it all coated really nicely because this is what's going to create that veining in your piece. And without the paint, your veins are not going to be clear. And eh, I'm going to get dirty anyway, but um, just kind of break pieces apart. You want big pieces and little pieces. You don't want all uniform pieces. So just kind of break it apart as you go. Make sure that the paint gets in there, gets in the crevices. Um, if you don't have enough, sprinkle on a little more. Just kind of do it. Get in there, get dirty. Nobody ever said polymer clay was supposed to be clean. If you hear that, that is my dog sleeping in the background. She's half pug and half beagle, but she's got that pug nose that is infamous for snoring very loudly. Alright, so there's the black. Now I'm just going to set that aside. That's nice and... I think that's nice and... Cover for the most part. Just break up a big piece there. Alright, I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to do the dark brown. That looks very attractive. Alright, here's my dark brown. Oh, it's love. I'm not used to doing things for the camera yet, so I keep getting my hand in the way and not even thinking about it. Alright, so I'm going to mix this one up really well. And now I am going to leave these to dry for... It doesn't take very long. It takes probably... 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes at the most. I I give it a little time. It's, it takes a little working to get it all stuck together and um, stuff afterwards. So I like to give it ample time to kind of adhere to the clay. And when I didn't give it time to dry, I found that it made 
more of a mess because it just kind of, I don't want to say soaked into the clay, but it kind of like seemed like it didn't make the veins the way that I wanted it to. It more made kind of a smudge, if that makes any sense. So I am going to let this dry and then I will be back for the rest of the tutorial. Okay, my clay and paint has dried and what I should have done while it was still wet was put the glitter on it. So I'm going to see how this works with putting it on. I have this glitter that I love. It's from Joann's. I use it for everything. It's Craft Essentials Fine Glitter and it's great. One has a little pink hue to it. One has a white hue. Another has a blue. I love it. I use it for everything. I have loads and loads and loads of glitter, but this is the one that I use for everything that I do. My resin, my clay. So anyhow, what you're going to do now is you're going to get the glitter nice and incorporated. It's, like I said, I should have done this when it was wet, so it's probably not going to stick as well as I would like it to, but that's okay. You'll know to do it when it's wet. And I'm going to take pieces and like I said in the beginning, it tends to be jagged. The the um, true turquoise tends to be jagged. But I'm not a fan of jagged. I like finished. I like smooth. I like glittery. I like girly. So what I'm going to do is actually make some cabs out of this. And I'm going to make these cute little, I don't know what you would call these. I'm not good at shapes, but I'm going to make these cute little pieces here and just trim it off and you can see in the end what it's going to look like. You can see the veins and then I'm going to take them out and I did spray these earlier but I forgot to spray them again. So and there's going to be a lot of sanding going on so don't worry if these are not in in the right position. When you put them in the oven you're going to put them in like this and when you take them out you're going to sand. Now I want to do these flat and the reason I want to do these flat is because like I said there's a lot of sanding and I learned the hard way with these here that I did to um, not get too carried away with your jaggedness. If you don't mind a lot of sanding then I say go for it but if you like, if you're like me and you want to basically get your pieces done, then I would not make them very jagged because it was a pain to sand. So take this out of here. I just want the basic shape. I don't need it to necessarily be uniform or exactly alike or anything. I just want the basic shape and this is going to be my bottom, my flat bottom. This is going to be my top. And that gives me all about the same weight, the same everything. And this is the brown one that I'm doing and this is the black one. And I'm going to make the black one a different shape because I want to see when it comes out what it's going to end up looking like. So I'm going to do square for the black one just going to press it in my form here and cut off the excess so it's nice and flat. And right now it looks like a mess and it will look like a mess until you're done. When you're done you're going to have this black lump that comes out of the oven and you're going to think this woman was absolutely crazy. This does not look like turquoise. And then you're going to take out your sandpaper your, you're going to start, I start with 220. Um, everybody has their things that they do and I don't necessarily conform to the the rest of the population so I just kind of do whatever I find works for me and one of the things that works for me is to start with 220 to sand off the heavy duty stuff. Um, you will find that this has very heavy, heavy paint on it when you take it out of the oven. And that's the point. The point is, 
you are going to have a lot of veining in this when you're done. And that's what's going to make it look like polymer, I mean look like faux turquoise, but it's really polymer clay. So I'm going to bake these and come back and start sanding so that you can see what this ends up looking like when it's all said and done.